Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Breguet Marine Royale Alarm Diver. You can see and you can purchase this watch on our website sometime in the future, because this exact example has been sold. And for our owner-to-be, I'm going to be giving you a complete review of the watch, but also a how-to, starting with the functions of the alarm and the principle of operation of the caliber 519R. Now you can see that the watch features two crowns and an on-off toggle for the alarm. Now the movement is based on Blancpain's 1240 family, so it's an alarm that automatically winds both the mainspring barrel for the watch and the alarm with an alarm power reserve indicator on the dial itself. Now there is an alarm hand and I have set it to just after 7 o'clock. With the alarm toggle you'll note the on-off indicator just below the index at 12. Now you can see the musical note. And you can see the action of the alarm striker on the case back. Now it's important to note that the watch will not be allowed to run down completely when the alarm is allowed to run out. So you can run the alarm to exhaustion without stopping the watch. So here's how it works. Let's turn the alarm off for a moment. You can notice that the toggle jumps up and down. It's a little blue musical note. And you'll also note that the alarm power reserve at 10 o'clock has run all the way to empty. So now this crown, in its position flush to the case, thread it out, because it is a screw down crown, and begin turning it. Now you'll note the alarm power reserve begins to sweep across its expanse. And within that aperture, it's the little gold triangle that indicates the state of wind of the watch. It's important to note that you wind both the alarm and the mainspring barrel of the watch with this same crown in this same position. Okay, so now I have my alarm fully wound and I have my on-off toggle. And you'll note as the alarm discharges, so does the IRM. Okay, so this crown has other functions too. We're just scratching the surface. In its second position, you'll note that it can be used to quick set the date at 6 o'clock. Remember never to attempt this between 8 p.m. and 3 a.m. as that's the period during which the movement's automatic date jumper is engaged and attempting the quick set while the date jumper is engaged can damage the movement. Finally, in its outermost position, you'll note the movement has a hacking function or stop seconds. This halts the seconds hand so you can synchronize to a known accurate reference time such as a dive timer because it is a dive watch or perhaps more likely an online atomic clock. You'll also note that the hands can be moved and set precisely and that they are beautiful rose gold brigade style hands. Okay, so how do you set the alarm? Now that I've moved the civil time hour and minute hand out of the way, you can see the sort of cyan blue golden triangular index that represents the setting organ of the watch. Now you can see by threading out the screw down crown at four o'clock and turning it counterclockwise, I can slowly and very precisely select the exact time that I want the alarm to sound. It has a resolution of approximately five minutes, so you'll probably never be spot on, but you'll always be close to your intended alarm time. And remember, you have the on-off toggle right next to the dial at eight o'clock. Okay, so those are the fundamental functions of the watch. Now you need to remember every time you're finished setting the watch and the alarm, you wanna thread the crowns down because they are screw down crowns and it's necessary to screw them into their sleeves in order to obtain the watch's maximum rated water resistance of 300 meters. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the watch's ergonomics. Let's talk about its style, its substance, its fit and finish. Now that we have the operation down, consider that this watch, 45 millimeters in diameter, doesn't take the alarm toggle or the two crowns or the ratcheting system for the pawl drive of the bezel into account. It is a big watch. It wears an immense 45 millimeters. In terms of thickness, it's 17.5 millimeters. This is a lot of gold. This is designed to be worn, assuredly, with a bathing suit on a yacht in Monaco Harbor, one of the two of them. You'll also note that the lug-to-lug -lug span of this watch across the wrist is an immense 56 and a half millimeters, and that's accentuated by the flare of this strap, which has conforming end pieces that beautifully trace the arc of the case and it's nicely integrated but it does fight the wrist curve a little bit 
as a huge and heavy sports watch, you'll note it's very reassuring to see the strap affixed by screws rather than spring bars. The strap, however, is an extraordinary piece. Physically massive, beautifully made, precisely molded, and, and that is not easy to do. It features a gorgeous hobnail Clou de Paris style imprint on the top. And on the bottom, it's beautifully channeled with an inlaid cyan royale signature. And these channels allow the skin to breathe during hot days when oil, moisture, sweat, and grit will accumulate on the wrist and need to be released. It is a sports watch in the strictest sense, but it is a truly royale sports watch. You'll even note that the strap minders themselves are made out of finished, high polish 18 karat rose gold. The clasp is a beautiful piece physically massive and impeccably finished. It's as grand as the watch itself, and as you can see, this is anything but a default design, custom built design and fabrication. A gorgeous exclamation mark on the end of an outstanding statement watch. Now let's take a quick look right here at the features of the case and the dial. Now you'll note that the watch features the traditional Breguet welded lugs with ro cold rolled case flanks, cold rolled and then finished by hand to clean up any imperfections. It's immaculate and it's matched by a truly grand bezel. You can see it's calibrated in five minute increments after the critical first 20 minutes of the dive with a screwed on modular, let me see if I can get that, a screwed on modular luminescent index, oversized, easy to see in the dark. Now you'll also note that the watch features a Paul locking system on the flank. That's what that is, it's not a crown guard and the bezel has a tremendous tactile and audible report to it. It feels like a million dollars because quite frankly, that is the target market of this watch. This is an absolute top shelf diver. You'll note that each one of the crowns is beautifully made with a high polish and a knurled edge. And there's actually a rubber grip on the edge of the alarm crown. The idea being that it will be easier to grip it with wet, sweaty, or gloved hands to set the alarm prior to a dive. Now on the case back, you can see the Breguet caliber 519R. Now it's finished to a different standard than Blancpain GMT Revi watches that feature the same base caliber. It's somewhat simplified and I may say beautified. Gorgeous rose lathe, not quite Clou de Paris, but a guilloche swirl reminiscent of nautical imagery on the 18 karat gold winding mass. And you also note gorgeous linear Cote de Genève across the movement itself. The base plate perlage is very tight and evenly overlaid, beautifully executed. And you can see a little bit of the glowing edges of the bridges, which feature a gorgeous hand laid rounded enclage. Moreover, you'll note a free sprung balance as this is a sports watch. It has the more durable free sprung architecture rather than a mobile stud. Very, very, very impressive. Tough, massively built, beautifully finished, and mechanically complex. This is an incredible timepiece. Again, you may be able to see our previous listing for the watch, but this one has already found a new home.